online retailer, Overstock.com. That's the place to go for discounted items, but how does a company like that compete with, say, Amazon? Let's ask Patrick Byrne. He is Overstock.com's CEO, and he joins us right now. All right, I know you've got a lot to say about this. I'm an Amazon kind of guy. I'm, I, I know how to use their system. Why should I use you instead of Amazon? Because uh, our prices are about 10% lower and our customer service is better. That's it? <laughs> yeah, so we're, prices are 10% lower on average on our site. Look, look. And, our, and we're better, by every, industri by every survey in the industry and such, we, it always ends up Overstock, Zappos, and Amazon is having the top three customer satisfaction and service and stuff. So we always are jockeying among those three positions. And our prices are lower. We have a, we have a different loyalty program, but it's been uh, recently called by a consulting group the most generous on the net where we give you cash back and things like that. A lot of, okay. Plus, we're just nicer guys to deal with. You know, there's a rule in television. When I ask a question, you may not provide a three-word answer because that really stymies me. I don't know where to go <laughs> after that. I'm, I'm kind of left holding the bag here. But you bailed yourself no. out with a very good follow-up to the question. Well done. Okay, thank you. Got anything else to say? No, <laughs> well, yeah, well, another way we compete, I can tell you another way. Well, normally it's, I'm not being told my answers are too short, normally too long. But I'll tell you, my, my, uh, the other way we compete is we're more profitable. I mean, people don't notice this, but we, two years ago, we were more profitable in both an absolute and on a per, per share basis. And this last year, we're more profitable on per share. Okay. And I think that that's, so that's another way we compete. Okay. You have, as I understand it, 1,492 employees. What do you make? We do. Of, what do you make of the push towards the minimum wage of $10.10 .10 an hour? You go along with that? Uh, no. First of all, everybody, all of our employees are over, are, are over minimum wage. That wouldn't affect anybody, but I think it's a horrific idea for the United States. When you, pray, when you raise the price of something, people buy less of it, which you may have noticed last time you went into a store and tried to buy something for nothing. When the government, this is absolute insanity, demagoguery. I, don't, I can't believe some, the economists, and some of them are friends of mine, who have signed this letter saying, oh, this won't affect the labor market. It's a, it's a terrible idea. What they should do if they want to get rid of unemployment, they should eliminate the minimum wage, and especially if you're concerned about unemployment, about minorities, and having minorities have a chance to, to start climbing the ladder, to get rid of the minimum wage altogether. In fact, until we had a minimum wage, white and black unemployment were about the same. As soon as we had the minimum wage, black unemployment doubled and has stayed double white unemployment since the 1950s, since it started. All right, I've got one last one for you. It's about Bitcoin, because I know you accept Bitcoin as payment. Yeah. I, I'm just not sure how you work out a value system. I mean, if I agree to buy something with, with Bitcoin, the, the tomorrow the value of Bitcoin can be 20% up or 20% down. How, how do you establish a price with Bitcoin? Well, it is a thin, illiquid market now with a lot of volatility. We don't accept any volatility risk. We accept Bitcoin and then immediately, instantaneously translate it into dollars, so we don't have the risk. But ultimately, as I recall, you're a bit of a gold bug store. And some of the virtues, some of the charm of gold can be found in Bitcoin, primarily that it's limited. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah. well, let me get my 10 cents worth in here. I'm not a gold Please bug. Do. I'm not. I'm not a gold. I do not wish, I don't think we're ever going to return to the gold standard. I do own some gold as just a hedge against the state taxes, actually. But that's where the gold bug thing comes from, I guess. But uh, I've got one last one for you, and this is real fast. You are accused of faking discounts. That you'll say that you'll you say that this item costs a hundred dollars. It doesn't, and you'll say you're going to discount it by fifty percent. So you bring it down to a price which you wanted to sell it for in the first place. Is that accurate? No. First of all, it doesn't affect the fact that we're the lowest prices on the internet. Secondly, we have been we are I think the gold standard since at least two thousand and eight. We have had teams of people. I mean, you can't imagine how much work goes into finding comparison prices, getting them right, having lawyers sign off on the processes. We have bent over backwards. There's always some, there's always sort of outlier cases. We have a million products. Somebody lied to us in one case and we sold six units or something at, a, at the wrong price. 
but uh, we, we are fanatics about getting okay. our, our comparison prices right and our own prices low. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick Byrne, Overstock.com. You bailed yourself out very well after that first answer. I mean, I could hardly shut you <laughs> up. Uh, Patrick, it was great, and we do appreciate you being with us. Thank you very much indeed. Always a pleasure. Gotcha. Thank you, Stuart. All right. Dow's recovering a bit. We're up 50.